Hi, this is Regina Y. Favors with Pre-Singles Counseling. This is part of my Pre-Singles Counseling Coaching Curriculum where I design lessons and case studies based in the psychology literature on different topics. This Pre-Singles Counseling is targeted to three types of individuals. The first individual is a single, is a person who is interested in becoming single. That, per, that means that person is not necessarily interested in dating or entering the marriage market. The second individual is a single individual who is interested in entering the dating market. And then the last individual is a single dating individual who is interested in marriage. So take some time to listen to this lesson and our case study. Please leave a comment uh, and I will reply. In addition, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit the notification bell if you are interested in further topics. This is Pre-Singles Counseling, a Pre-Singles Counseling Coaching Curriculum. Thank you for visiting the channel. This lesson is subject to fair use where I will comment, criticize, um, offer research as well as teach and provide scholarship. Single women should be knowledgeable about what it means to be single and how to navigate their singleness regardless of, of a decision to date or marry. This means that single women should take the necessary time to learn about their singleness, set academic, professional, and personal goals, and contemplate whether they are ready to enter the dating market. Single women should never enter the dating market without a goal and a plan. Therefore, one of the most important aspects of being a single woman is that you can plan your transition, establish a time schedule, set mating preferences, and learn about how men and women date. Pre-singles counseling is based in a decision to enter or exit singleness. Pre-singles is the time period between single and contemplation of dating. There is a difference between being a single individual and being a sin single individual who has entered the dating market, which includes the sex market. Pre-singles counseling reflects the processes by which an individual researches, learns, and plans to navigate life either as a single, a dating single, or a single interested in marriage. So pre-singles defined, pre-singles counseling is defined as the research processes and planning for entering a state of singlehood. The main target audience is 18 to 45 years of age, man and woman. However, middle school to high school students are considered. Processes include single to single. So that is that transitional time prior to entering the dating market at any age. Single to dating single that transitional time prior to considering marriage, and then single dating to marriage, that transitional time prior to and after premarital counseling. Pre-singles counseling is the immediate strategy of adopting life plans to manage the self as a responsible individual adult, adult up to and including a major life change. So here are some pre-lecture discussion questions. So are you single? This question means single without separation or dating rotation or on, on again, off again, boyfriend or any other romantic relationship, including rebounding and dating. Why are you single? Are you enduring a recent separation from a romantic partner? Do you plan to remain single? What are your plans to change from single to a member of a romantic couple or marriage? Do you have a financial plan as a single woman? And you will see throughout this lecture, this orientation course, um, that I focus most, if not all of the topics on having a financial plan. We oftentimes make uh, unsound decisions based upon um, 
the fact that we don't have enough money or we are looking for money or we are looking for someone to cover us and we are not covering ourselves financially. So keep that in mind. You will, you will see throughout this orientation multiple references to financial planning. Pre-discussion, so what is your SWAT? So I'm using um, SWAT that you would normally see in business um, as a way to um, get you to engage your own personal SWAT. So what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities? What are your threats? So after each section, I will ask you what your SWAT is. Estate planning, so beneficiaries, inheritance, and taxes. So estate planning considerations. Creating an estate plan will require you to make decisions about the following. So how assets will pass to your uh, beneficiaries, how you will minimize federal taxes assessed on gifts and, and, and estates, how you will minimize state taxes on estate or inheritance taxes, how you will use the gift tax exemption to transfer assets while you are still living, how the taxable estate will pay estate and inheritance taxes before assets are, are distributed to beneficiaries. So we're going to address these bullet points in the next slide. All right, so here are the sample estate planning documents that you would need to um, create or have created for you. You will need to seek an attorney and tax advisor to guide you in creating and filing the appropriate documents. The estate planning documents include the following, a will, a living will, the advanced medical directive, and then the durable power of attorney for health care. And we're going to discuss all four. So the will. A will allows you to, com to communicate your wishes. When you do not have a will, the state decides how to distribute your assets. This is called dying interstate. The elements of a will include the following. So there is um, a designation of a, an executor, the, uh, the persons who carry out the provisions of the will, um, the beneficiaries, the person inheriting the assets, the instructions, information about how the person will receive the assets, and then the guardian, information about who will guard the children. The will designates the, the, the beneficiaries of bank accounts and real estate since these are examples of assets that do not permit the naming of beneficiaries. Assets that permit the naming of beneficiaries and direct transfer of assets without involving the will include IRAs and investment accounts. You can avoid the, pro uh, the probate process, associated fees, and certain taxes. However, assets that pass through the will uh, typically go through the probate process which is a legal process for settling an estate with or without a will assets that permit the naming of a beneficiary do not undergo probate so these are the assets that are subject to probate and then the assets that are not subject to probate so um retirement investment accounts uh, that are missing beneficiaries or transfer of death instructions. So usually with the retirement and investment account, there's always an option that you can uh, provide transfer of death instructions. Cash, cash accounts that do not allow TOD or transfer of death, real estate, personal property, and any asset held tenants in common. And then assets not subject to probate, because they usually allow for you to name a beneficiary, retirement accounts, IRAs with named with a named beneficiary, trusts, insurance policy proceeds, 
investment brokerage cash accounts with transfer of death instructions, and then assets with joint ownership with right of survivorship. So in all these individual terms, real estate and investment and financial terms, you can always research on your own and get more information because uh, I don't want to give you an, ex uh, an example or content for it because you would always need to consult an attorney uh, in terms of writing the will. And so it is much better that you get this information in terms of understanding it from a licensed attorney. The advanced medical directive is a written statement that outlines the desired medical treatment should an individual become incurably ill. The, the United States recognizes two types of advanced directives, uh, a living will and then a durable power of attorney. So the living will. The living will permits a person to specify the treatment he or she wants or do not want in case of a terminal illness, coma, and or near-death situation. The language might include determining whether, whether there is a reasonable expectation of recovery and if he or she should be kept alive through medical intervention of any kind. The living will may specify pain-relieving medication even if it shortens life. Living wills ensure personal control, but there is no guarantee. They are limited to people with terminal illness or who are expected to die shortly. Sometimes some doctors do not always follow living wills. Since they can be ignored, a durable power of attorney is necessary. So the durable power of attorney. The durable power of attorney for health care authorizes the appointment of another person to make health care um, healthcare decisions on one's behalf. The appointment of the other person may be a family member, but it can be someone else requiring a short statement. So I just want to stop right here before I go into the short statement. As you um, undoubtedly understand that as a single adult, these are some of of the decisions that you have to make and you have to know that the people that you appoint or include in your will or in your living will or in um, for your durable uh, power of attorney, you can trust. It's very important because if you're not going to get married and you're going to be a single adult or if you do decide to um, become married or pursue marriage, you got to be sure that the, that when you put this person in your will or living will or use as um, a durable power of attorney that you can actually trust this person that they won't just cut the cord. If you remember Tyler Perry's uh, movie, Diary of a Black, uh, Mad Black Woman, when the husband decided to leave his wife um, and... Um, stay with his mistress he he kicked the wife out of the house but then he had later trouble and uh, which led him to be seriously injured by his client and he was um, in a coma I think maybe on life support and the mistress wanted to cut the cord she didn't want to think about it she didn't care about it now here it is the wife was so concerned about a man who just kicked her out of the house about his life that she wasn't willing to cut the cord. So it does make a, a big, big difference who you choose in life, uh, whether you stay single and you have a family member or friend you will use to make um, you know, certain types of decisions, healthcare decisions, or a husband if you later decide to pursue marriage. So I just wanted to add that before we go into the sample statement. So here's a sample short statement, and it is courtesy of the uh, Office of the Attorney General, State of Illinois. And um, this is a sample statement. So I hereby appoint, in the name of the person, as my attorney in fact or agent to act for me and in my name in any way I, I could act in person to make any and all decisions for me concerning my personal care, medical treatment, hospitalization, hospitalization and health care 
and to require, withhold, or withdraw any type of medical treatment or procedure, even though my death may ensue. I would like to think that if you got sick, I wouldn't be so quick to pull the plug. I would go off somewhere and pray and pray to God about it, go read my Bible. I would consult more than one doctor. I would do all that I could before I make that final decision. So that's something that I want you to think about because you are a, you are appointing a person as an attorney, in fact, as your agent, meaning, meaning that that person has agency over you in your time of need uh, to act for you uh, in your name uh, to make any and all decisions for you concerning your personal care, medical treatment, hospital hospitalization, and health care, and to require, withhold, or withdraw any type of medical treatment or procedure, even though your death may ensue. So if you're going to withhold or withdraw any type of medical treatment or procedure, you would like for that person to have at least get some kind of consultation you can't choose people who are very uh, hasty in their decision, uh, in their, in their decision making. That they have a record, a whole historical record, of being hasty in their life. Don't make really thought out, logical decisions. A person who is a thought out, logical person will go and look the information up. Everything is on the internet. They will go and look the information up. They will do all that they could to try to find out about your issue before uh, they say, okay, I have no other choice but to pull the plug. So think about this statement very carefully because this is your process uh, as, um, this is something that you need to think about as you process becoming a single, becoming a dating single, or becoming a single uh, pursuing marriage. Now let's check SWAT for estate planning. So what are your estate planning strengths? What are your estate planning weaknesses? What are your estate planning opportunities? What are your estate planning threats? One thing that is most important is that it doesn't matter how much money you have, you can still create an estate. Now, working with an estate attorney is gonna cost you some money, right? Uh, but you can always create a basic estate uh, plan right and so you may not know what your estate planning strengths are right now or or your weaknesses or your opportunities or your threats because this may be a new concept for you if uh because we always think just because we are maybe everyday workers and not rich people that we don't need an estate plan you need a will you know it's important to have a will and the will can be part of the estate plan so i would encourage you to research this on your own get more information and uh, understand because if you have a house um, you can um, name beneficiaries you can you can create an estate if you have any kind of asset or property or anything like that um, you can still create an estate so I just encourage you to think about that so conclusions beliefs about mistakes so I don't have a full conclusion. I just I just thought that this right here, this quote from the film Unfaithful was very important. When I put this uh, presentation together, I thought about it. Uh, the movie had just come on HBO, so it was very fresh in my mind. Uh, but this is the, the conversation that Paul Vartan is having with Connie Sumner in Unfaithful. Uh, Richard Gere was her husband. And um, she was talking about mistakes or something like that. And Paul Vartan made a very interesting statement that I did not catch. All the times I have watched this film, I did not catch it until now. And it could be because it was for me to catch it now. There is no such thing as a mistake. There is what you do and what you don't do. And it is as simple as that. It is black and white. It is not uh, issues of gray that there is the thing that you do and then there's a the thing that you don't do. And so if Connie did not want to um, have an affair, then she didn't have to do it. There was nothing that forced her to have an affair. She forced herself. She, she 
sought it out. Uh, she visualized it. She sought it out. She made the call. She visited him multiple times, and she had an affair, period. She had already had, had an affair in her heart uh, emotionally even before she got there. But it, there is no such thing as a mistake. There is what you do and what you don't do. And that's what I want to leave you with, that even if we're we're not talking about affairs in this pre-singles counseling coaching uh, curriculum orientation, that uh, if you find yourself getting into the dating market and the sex market, and then you get pregnant or something like that, and you just, you didn't intend for that, you say that out loud, I didn't intend for that, I wasn't planning for that. Well, you actually were planning for that. Because if you didn't use any protection, right, uh, you were planning for it. But this is something, if you date with, with purpose, if you date with a goal uh, as a single individual, this will, will help you to hedge against that particular issue. If you don't want to have uh, sex that to lead with a baby, then you need to push for the partner to use contraception or you need to push for yourself to use contraception uh, or perform a number of, of strategies like the pullout game. I don't know. But um, this is you living a single life with purpose, with a plan, with a goal so that things like this just don't pop up. And, and you say, oh, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I should have done better. Okay. Because you, because you can't say that all the time. Once the child is here, that's, that's the rest of your life. Once you get with the wrong partner who might introduce you to drugs, that is an addiction that's going to take some time to get over and resolve. Once you get involved with somebody that you find uh, uh, and you know fall in love and find out that he's married, that's hard to get out of. It, you can get out of it, but it's hard to get out of. So that's why it's important to uh, think about being single, understand, date with a person, establish objectives, because if you don't, you're going to find that what you do in your personal life is going to affect your, uh, your academic and professional lives, especially your professional. You don't want Paul Vartan to come visit you at your job because you waited too long to cut it off, right? So I'm going to leave you with this as you think about your singleness and whether you want to stand, uh, stay single, single to single, whether you want to begin dating single uh, to dating single, or whether you are interested in marriage, single dating or dating single to um single um single leading to marriage right so that's something that i want you to think about and i thank you very much for listening to this lecture all right so hopefully you were able to gain insight from this video discussion please like subscribe and visit so uh, please like the video hit hit the notification bell for more discussions i am re-uploading all of my audios uh so i, I needed to make some changes to them. Uh, you can visit my web, my website for more content at reginawhyfavors.com. If you want to send me an email, you can send an email reginawhyfavors at yahoo.com. Please also purchase the book. It's going to come out in spring 2021. So I had to make changes um, to my book to update it. And I also updated, updated the title. So the original title was Bait, Hook, and Switch. Confessions of a Rebound Girl, and I have updated the title to Toxic Encounters, Why People Pursue Rebound Relationships. So right now I'm still basically editing it, and I want to make it available in spring 2021. So thank you very much for visiting my channel, and I am Regina Y. Favors. Have a great day.